Hello, everyone. This is Tom Fox, and I'd like to welcome you back to another episode of the Hill Country Artist Podcast. Today, I'm thrilled to have with me Nancy Huffman. Nancy, first of all, welcome, and thank you so much for taking the time to visit with us today. Thanks for inviting me. I really appreciate it. Nancy, could you tell us uh, where you grew up? I split my childhood. I was born in Dallas, as we all know, lived there a few years, and then my parents moved us back to Arkansas, which is where they were all from. So during my childhood, I moved back and forth a few different times. Spent my last two years of high school in Arkadelphia, Arkansas. So when did you start, when did you first get a spark around art? That was probably forever as long as I remember, even from arts and crafts to whatever it was artistic, I was always all into that. And uh, you always remember those small kind of things from your childhood. I just remember an older child at one time drawing a horse, and I thought it was so fabulous. And that's one of those moments, too, that I always thought sparked my interest. And then I took oil painting lessons when I was 13 with older women <laughs> at the community center, which was pretty, pretty fun. That was just a couple of years. They didn't really have too much art in school at that point in time. I guess not really till I was in high school did we have a lot. Right. So what what did you specialize in or at least start with back then in high school? Oh, back then I was painting my favorite rock and roll stars and comedians such as Ian Anderson of Jethro Tull and let's see, who else was there? George Carlin. He was one of my favorite drawings too that I did. That I, and I still even have that drawing, as a matter of fact. So tell us about college. When I graduated from school in Arkansas, I knew I had to go back to Texas. So that's what I did. My, my dream was to go to UT Austin and basically sight unseen, I went there and loved it. So did you study art in Austin? I did. Studied other things as well. I probably graduated with way, I know I did, graduated with way more credits than I actually needed because I was taking everything else along the way too. And uh, actually ended up in architecture along the way too. But I did get a fine arts degree, yes. And did you specialize or was that even available to you when you were studying an undergrad? Art? Yes. Or, yes, the Austin had all sorts of art, but it was predominantly modernist art, very abstract at that point in time, was the way most of the teachers taught at that point in time. So I ended up taking a lot of photography and some watercolor because that was a, more my vent, more realism. And what did you do after college? I went into architecture. <laughs> it was a good career. So there for a number of years, I did that. And I really enjoyed it. I did project architecture, drew building plans. We worked on hospitals primarily, a lot of renovation projects and things like that. And I did really enjoy it. It was only when I realized that it didn't work real well for a woman wanting a family that I ended up getting out of it. That too, and the market was very cyclical at the time and hospital, it just wasn't a good time for the hospital industry. Let's just say that. So, so when, what brought you to Kerrville? That's when I retired. I after architecture, I stayed home with my young children for a while, and then I ended up teaching art at the high school level, which was how I finished out my career. So when I retired from that, we really wanted to live in a place where people actually go to to visit because it's so beautiful. So that's how we ended up here. Let me go back to your teaching. What's it like to teach or what was it like to teach art back then? It hasn't really been that many years ago, about five years ago. It's really rewarding because I taught high school art and I was fortunate enough to teach all the way from art one classes all the way through AP studio classes. So you get to know the students, the ones that continue along that track anyway, you get to know them really well. And it's just really rewarding to see how they develop in their art and you get to submit their portfolios. And even the kids that didn't continue all along, it was, for a lot of them, it was a time of day that they could relax a little bit more. It wasn't quite as stressful, although some might disagree with that. It was a more relaxing time of the day for them. So they enjoyed being in art class. Where'd you teach high school? It's Katy Independent School District. So I taught at three 
different high schools while I was there. Followed my kids around a little bit. (laughs) Were you still doing art at this time or did you really flourish with that after you retired and you guys moved out here to Kerrville? I was doing some art, although not as much as I would have liked at that point in time. I did a lot of student projects because you're always doing projects along with your students. Sometimes it's you do them ahead of time so you can anticipate where they're going to have issues. But I did continue, would meet with a group of teachers and like usually once a week we'd do that and we'd get together and we would do our own art. So that way we could keep our foot in that a little bit more. And we even took, there were a few competitions that we would enter specifically like grants so that we could travel and pursue art and do those kind of things in the summer. So that was really fun too. So when did you all get out here to Kerrville? Five years ago, we moved here. Tell us about your art career after you moved to Kerrville. I did a show not too long after we moved here, maybe about six months. It was just a small local show in Hunt just to get my feet into it and see what this was all about because I'd never, ever pursued galleries or anything like that. So I did that. And then, of course, the pandemic hit, so that kind of put a damper on a lot of things there for a while, but I still continued. I've done artwork for Enchanted Rock. I've done some different, I mean, we started doing our own shows in Hunt just to make your own venues. We did that. So that's been a lot of fun. We've done those for a few years and I've been doing a few different plein air competitions around. And it's not really that I want to be a plein air artist per se and do that on the competition circuit like some of them do. I I just find it's a really good way to learn. And it's really hard, (laughs) as a matter of fact. So could you say that term again? Plain air? Plain air. Yeah, it's from the French Impressionists. They started doing that. Back then, you couldn't take photos so easily. It was a very new technology. And they would go out into the wild and paint. And that's because paint tubes had been invented. You could take it all out with you. So they started doing that and it's continued on since then. And now it's actually a competition. There are professional artists that do that regularly. They have starting from the spring all the way through the fall, there's competitions. So what is there one particular type or style you focus on now or do you have multiple interests? Tell us a little bit about what you're doing Several now. different styles. I guess that kind of comes back from my teaching background. I feel comfortable doing a lot of styles. So I can do all the way from photorealism but I don't prefer that. Maybe for drawing, but not for painting. Painting, I prefer impressionistic styles, almost into a little bit more abstracted with colors and mark making and things of that sort. Would these be landscapes, animals? Yeah, mostly landscapes, but I like to do some wild animals in there too. They're not necessarily all intended to be totally lifelike. (laughs) They're a little bit more fantastical than that. I do them in different colors and things like that. More of a spiritual kind of thing. It's the way I look at the animals there. Do you live in Hunt? I do, yeah. Uh, So tell us about the Hunt art scene. There's a number of us that get together and paint weekly. We try to do that. We mostly work in watercolor simply because it's easy for us to transport around and meet. And you can work in a smaller area doing that. So to me, that's my little break from my usual routine in the studio where I have stuff spread out all over the place. I can't do that when we meet at a little restaurant to paint, but we'll do that at Bridget's a lot of times. We go there weekly. So it's a fun thing for us too. It's always good to be able to connect back to artists, other artists, Because otherwise, you're stuck in the studio by yourself all the time. And that gets not only lonely, but you're not bouncing ideas off of each other. And being able to help each other out when you get stuck on something, it's just really beneficial to be around other artists. So we actually met in the summer of 2022 at the first Hunt Art Fair. Yes. And what was that like for you guys to get together? You've now had a second one at Bridget's. Uh, Uh Tell us about that experience for you. It's been a good experience, just learning more about the business aspect of it, too. Not that we're a profit-making venue. That's not what I mean. I just mean learning to do the publicity and learning to just put it all together and get it advertised. And 
That's something that they don't teach you in art school. <laughs> Maybe they do now, but they didn't when I was there. I but. don't think they do. So now let me broaden out the art community mm -hmm. to broader than Hunt to maybe Kerr County. How, okay. how would you assess the broader art community here in Kerr County? It's really thriving. There are a lot of artists that you meet all over the place. There's a lot of people like me who have moved here because they wanted to be in an area that is conducive to making art, meet other artists. And some of them retired, some of them not. Some of them have set up their own businesses here. But it's really good. And my impression is that you guys really support each other. Would that be a correct mm -hmm. assessment? It, it is. This is probably one of the few smaller towns that I've ever seen that has such a great art center like we have here. Right. Do you have any upcoming shows? Oh, we do. I'd mentioned plain air before. We have a plain air competition. It's through the Outdoor Painters Society of Texas, and it's called Paint Kerrville. Yes, Paint Kerrville, and it will be in September, about mid-September, and we will be displaying our work at the Kerrville Arts Center throughout the week. But the way it works is you put up what they call it, a kind of a keeper piece to start with, one that you've done prior to the competition. You go in for the competition and they stamp all your canvases because they don't want you coming in with one already done, of course. So they stamp the back of your canvases and then you go out and paint for the four or five days that they allow us to do that. So that's a pretty hectic time. And you're getting those all together. And then by the end of that week, you put them all up on the wall, still all wet paint. And we invite the public in. We'll have an open award ceremony that weekend. So if you're interested in seeing that, you'll have to look at the Kerrville Arts calendar. And then following that, we have another show. We're going to tail right on to the end of the Kerrville Paint Show. And this is a Magnificent Seven Women with Purpose. There's seven of us that are doing the show. And we each have, I think, about 18 foot of wall space that we're hanging our work in. So that's been what I've been really pushing for right now, getting some big paintings finished up for uh, that. I'm really looking forward to that exhibit because the women I've talked to, for those listening to this, the smile on her face is about as wide as you can get. And that's what the other women have had, a huge smile, because you're all looking forward to this. Oh, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's also being an artist, like I talked about, being alone in the studio, unless you have that goal that you're working towards, sometimes it's real easy to go fold some laundry and do things like that that you need to do. You need that push to get you going to finish up those things. So it's good. It's good for us. And it's a great place for us to be able to display our work. We're going to link to that, to that exhibit in the show notes. But before we leave, I wanted to ask you if our listeners wanted any more information on your, where mm -hmm. can they go? NancyHuffman.com. Very easy to find. Well, Nancy, I wanted to thank you so much for taking the time to visit with us. And I greatly look forward to your next couple of exhibits. Yes. Thank you very much. Hope to see you there. All right.